Hello and welcome to OK at Home DIY. If you are new here, my name is Zaina and I am grateful that you are sp spending some time with me today. In this video, I have two Chic for Cheap DIYs for you. This is in participation of the Chic for Cheap Challenge and I will let you know a little bit more about that in the video. As well as in this video today, I am sharing with you a hot glue gun review. I am excited this company sent me this glue gun. And yes, it was given to me, but the opinion and the review are all my own. So let's get into today's video. Monvict sent me this mini hot glue gun and you can order this off of Amazon. I will link that in the description box below. I was so excited when they asked me to do a review and I was in the market for a mini glue gun. So this is how it comes and you open it up and the instructions are right on top. So easy and simple. I love that it has this really um, clear on and off button. The squeeze mechanism is easy to use and you can you know, see it working there up in the glue gun, as well as there is a bright green light when it turns on. So that's pretty awesome. I am so loving this stand. This is so sturdy of a stand and you can put that together as well as you get these glitter glue sticks as well as 20 of these regular glue sticks, but they are super long. I will show you in the video a little bit later how long they are compared to a regular size glue stick. So that all came in the box that they sent to me. Just a few more things I wanna point out before we get into the DIY are these cool suction cups on the bottoms. When you place it down, it can stick there as well as this silicone mat that does remove and you can clean it off for any reason. That stand just clips right on in there really easily as well as this, these little, this little footed stand that just clips right on in there and if you would like to use that kind of as a free freestanding glue gun you can um, but i really liked the the other stand i wanted to point out the tip there's a silicon protector tip there that's orange and the size of the tip is this of a ballpoint pin end i like that for precise gluing and here is the sizing between the hot glue sticks that they send you and the regular hot glue stick, as well as the green light when it turns on. The inspiration for the vintage window is coming from these farmhouse style vintage window panels. And it's kind of a hodgepodge of those three. So I'm starting out with this long window frame it's a little longer than 11 by 14 and then these dowels that are 12 inches long i got the window frame at a thrift store or yard sale for like a dollar and of course these dowels i got at dollar tree and they think you get more than six in a pack um, but we'll just say this is going to be two dollars for this project this video is in participation of the Chic for Cheek Challenge hosted by Christy Creates and her co-host, the Crafty Quinn. They'll be in the description box below as well as the playlist for this challenge. Please go check out their channels. This is great. I love this challenge. Now I laid the dowels out from one corner and see where it hit on the other side. And then I found that middle dowel placement. Now I'm just doing the crossing pieces and I lay it across, see where it hits and I cut the dowels with a dog nail cutter. I love this because you can get kind of an angle on it and it uh, will secure in place. Now I'm taking my hot glue gun and putting the glue precisely where I want it. This just comes out a little bit. So you keep pumping it to see how much you want. I love it because you can control the hot glue where it goes so well. Um, a lot of my other glue guns, I have a little bit of trouble controlling where that glue goes. Now I am just going to glue down these pieces that I cut and then I I did something kind of wonky on this first one. It, It's okay. It turned out okay, but not perfect. So I should have started with that corner piece and then gone down. I'm clipping it just a little bit more because it needed to be cut a little bit shorter. And then I, um, it looks like a continuation, barely, of that 
a bottom stick there, but I'm gonna go with it because this is my first one and I thought it looked pretty good. So then I move on to the center piece there. And it doesn't take long for that glue to cool and stick, but yet it's still warm so you can move things around. Um, so I'm starting out with the top diagonal piece and then I move on to the bottom. So of course I make my two marks here and I try to diagonal my clippers so then I actually have somewhat of a angle on there. And again, this hot glue gun, I can't stop raving about it. It puts the glue exactly where you want it, but it doesn't go overflowing where it's gonna be showing up front. Next, mark it again with that and I'm going to cut it with my uh, dog nail clippers there and just I hold it for just a couple seconds and it does just adhere. I think this is good and sturdy the way it is. Going to my third one. Now what I will say is I didn't really pay attention to those cr um, where they cross and see if they were all three lined up and if you do look close they're kind of all a little little bit off from each other but when you're just glancing, they all look very lined up. So I would say for a more precision placement, I would measure exactly where you want them to cross on each one and then um, cut the dowel sticks to hit at those marks. But all in all, I think this turned out really well. And when things were just a tad bit too too tight, I would trim it down at an angle. I liked the angle because then it could hit up against the side of the round dowel so much better. And if that glue did leak into the front, there was just a bit leakage here where there was, uh, where they crossed and I glued them together. And I, I thought that was fine because it reminded me of the soldering points. So I'm going to reinforce those crossing points with just a small popsicle stick cut down. I'm just cutting it down real thin to glue on the back of each one of those cross points. And again, this hot glue gun was great at putting the glue exactly where I wanted it and um, nowhere else. So I really loved this. I told you I was in the market for a mini one and that was the reason why. It's because those mini glue guns, you can really just put the glue in a small area and it's not running around everywhere. So I'm gonna take this out and spray paint it black after I get all those little pieces off. There wasn't very many of those glue stick strings. I use the flat quick color in black and it really does dry quick. I was dry within minutes. I came back in and did a little distressing here. I was kind of nervous because I thought it looked so pretty without the distressing, uh, but my husband strongly encouraged me to do so. So here it is. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper and the color before was kind of like a hunter green color. And that kind of does show through a little bit with that distressing. But I made sure it went all the way through to the wood there. Got on the outside of the frame, inside of the frame. And I'm just distressing a little bit of those dowels to kind of make the whole look more cohesive. And that is how I made this vintage window. In here, in just a few seconds, you'll see how it turned out. Here is the side by side of mine and Jocelyn Maines, Kirkland's, and that Ranch Junkie Mercantile. They're all over $80 or $80 plus, and mine was just $2. I I'm pretty proud of that. I really like how it turned out. Let me know what you think down in the comment box below. Interior Delight set of three tobacco baskets is the inspiration for DIY number two. They sell them for $59.99. I thought this tobacco basket was similar in shape and originally it was sold at Dollar General but I purchased mine at a thrift store and I was blessed enough to get not one but two because I like to buy my baskets and sets of two sometimes so I purchased two of them for six dollars 
and they had some nail holes in the center of them where they were holding a plaque. So I'm going to use joint compound to fill those holes. I just put it in there and kind of smush it down and rub over it. That's all I do. No sanding and I just let that dry. I take it out and I spray paint them front and back in Rust-Oleum spray paint called Granite. It has a satin finish. I'm using paint to actually really do the job of transforming these tobacco baskets. So the next colors of paint I'm going to use are elephant and mineral and some white chalk paint. The elephant chalk paint is going to take the finish of this from satin to matte. I That was the closest I could get in uh, color and I really liked that granite color but the Again, the finish was satin. So I'm just taking some elephant chalk paint and I am just kind of giving everything one basic coat, not trying to get it a good coat, just get it all around there to take off that sheen of the satin. Next, I am dry brushing on Mineral by Waverly. This is like a taupey gray color. And dry brushing is just loading your paint, your paintbrush with a little bit of paint offloading it off to the side so it's really more dry than it has a lot of paint on it and then you brush over your project and that gives you those brush strokes to help highlight areas and to make things look more worn. The next thing I am using to dry brush or the next color is just white. I like using three colors because it makes it look more worn and it gives the project more dimension so again dry brushing the white onto my project I do it right over the top of the mineral since you're hardly using any paint the paint dries very quick which allowed me to just go right on to next next color for no dry time I really liked making sure this white brought out all the points on around the basket around the rim and then, oh, I'm making sure since this does stick out from the wall, I'm making sure these little parts that stick out in the back also get distressed. So everything looks cohesive. Moving on to the handles, I see it's made with rope and maybe some kind of basket material. So I am going to take some rope from the Dollar Tree and some twine. And I'm going to make sure that little fold is down at the bottom. And I'm moving on to the side. I decided these two little gaps were where I wanted the handle to be. So I kind of guesstimated here with the, the rope handle. And when I started gluing on, um, it was too long. So I went ahead and adjusted that. So once that was adjusted to that length, I cut four strips of rope that length. So, so um, each one of my baskets had the same length of handle going across the side. So there was cohesion right so when I got that handle glued on I just glued on the end of the twine here and I wrapped it a few times this is going on around the outside and then I'm coming in and wrapping it around the end of the rope there to cover that up and to give it more of a detailed finish I think this makes it look more high-end and exactly like the not exactly but more like the inspiration piece so I do go on the inside of the rope there I wrap it a couple times around on the inside and then I finish it off uh, wrapping it around kind of the outside of the rope so I come up underneath and again on the other side I decided to make it kind of a standard where I glued my twine on the outside of the rope there outside of the handle and I came back in and under and looped it around the rope there to to cover up the end of the rope and when I got to a certain spot where it kind of covered up the rope the most I went ahead and switched to the inside of the handle about three or four loops wrapping around I tried to kind of crisscross it so like anything um, that was not covered would be covered and then to finish it off I go back around the outside where I start and then I glue it in the bottom and trim anything um, that was remaining. And here's how it turned out. Uh, 
I loved how with just a little bit of paint you could transform this and to look like a high-end item. Interior Delights is $59.99 for three. Mine was $6 for two. But I think I scored a good deal and they look great. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you are new here, I would love for you to subscribe and then hit the notification bell and make DIYs for my home with all sorts of things, mainly from Dollar Tree products and thrifted products, but I love to do a good trash to treasure. I love to have conversations with you guys down in the comments below. So please leave a comment whether you liked the DIYs, if you have a helpful tip for me, or just to say hi, leave a thumbs up, or give me a heart down in the comments. I would love it. And until the next time, everyone, you have a good one.